I know I'm a couple days late to the news, but my excuse was that I was studying for a promotion. I made it by the way. And I was moving into my new apartment. So now I have way more space for VR. No more punching desks. Ah! Oh, I am a big sucker for VR hardware. You might be able to tell from some of the videos I've made. And I'm a big fan of VR headsets. So lately, I've been feeling like an extremely dehydrated man in the middle of the Sahara Desert. But instead of needing water or, or subway, I need VR news. But thankfully, after years of speculation and rumors about what Valve has been doing behind the scenes with their next VR headset, we finally have some news. Take some notes and pull out your wallets if you're interested as we talk about Valve's brand new VR headset, the Steam Frame. So Valve didn't just drop a new VR headset, it was announced along with two other devices, the Steam Machine and their new Steam Controller. But with me being like a VR type of guy, we're going to be focusing on the Steam Frame. So to be straight up, if you were expecting this headset to be the Index 2, unfortunately this headset might not be it. Instead, Valve has taken a whole different approach for the Steam Frame, with an emphasis on a streaming first, wireless VR headset that could be used for not only your VR games, but non-VR games as well. So similar to the Quest 3, this headset is supposed to just work. And based on what I've seen so far with different news articles and videos covering it, it might actually be better. All right, let's get into the specs because this is where things get interesting. Unlike the Index or the base screen beyond, the Steam Frame is capable of being a standalone VR headset. You don't need a PC, you don't need base stations, no cables necessary. Compared to something like the Quest 3, the Steam Frame honestly looks like a beast. It's running a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, while the Quest 3 has an XR2 chip. Uh, to keep it a buck fifty, I don't really know if that's much better. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Plus, it's got double the RAM, two storage options at 256 gigs and one terabyte, and it even has a micro SD card slot for more expansion. The battery's a little better too, and Valve actually put it on the back of the head strap, which will act as sort of like a counterweight, so you won't feel like your headset is very front heavy. Finally, it's got dual stereo speakers on each side, which will cancel out vibrations or something like that. I don't know, that sounds pretty cool. But whether they'll be able to match the speakers on the index still remains a question. So purely on raw specs, the Steam Frame definitely wins, which I would kind of hope after all the Quest 3 came out two years ago. And we haven't even gotten to the displays yet. The lenses on the Steam Frame are pancake lenses, as is becoming the standard. The displays themselves are two LCD panels running at 2160 by 2160, which can go from 72Hz all the way to 120Hz, with an experimental 144Hz mode. Finally, the Steam Frame has an estimated horizontal FOV of 110 degrees. Some of you might be asking, why not add some OLED panels in there, it's 2025. Valve says that they chose LCD panels over OLED ones due to the light losses associated with pancake lenses, and I have no doubt that it also probably helped them bring down the production costs a little bit. So off rip, based on the specs I've just mentioned alone, this already sounds like a pretty solid headset. Of course, we won't know 100% until everyone gets their hands on it, early 2026. Now we move on to the specs that some people like and others don't. Valve had worked on the original HTC Vive and the Index, which are all outside-in tracked headsets, meaning to get these bad boys to work, you're gonna need some base stations. But with the Steam Frame, all of that is thrown out the window because like the Quest, this is an inside-out tracking headset. It does this with four monochrome cameras which will track your headset and controller position. The good news is obvious, no base stations, less setup, fewer wires, less money. For a lot of people, that's a huge win, but inside-out tracking does have its downsides. The first one is going to be controller occlusion or general tracking. There are some VR games that have interactions like reaching behind your back for a weapon or putting something on your shoulder. And the cameras can only track what they can actually see. If you put your controller behind your body for whatever reason, the tracking sort of just has to guess from there. Now to be fair, this isn't really a massive issue on the Quest, so maybe Valve's implementation will be fine. The second downside, and this one might actually be a deal breaker for some people, is that the Steam Frame has zero base station support. So for someone who's coming from an Index or a Reverb G2 who use Steam VR to rely on things like full body tracking in VR chat, this might turn them off. Cause then you're gonna need to get yourself a headset tracker, which is an extra 150 bucks that some might not be willing to spend. My Quest Pro users know what's up. 
But enough about that, another big plus is that the Steam Frame has two cameras on the inside for eye tracking. Now I'm sure you can use this in VR chat, but this is mainly for foveated rendering, or foveated streaming as Valve calls it. Basically, the headset only renders in details in the exact spot you're looking at. It tracks where your eyes are looking in real time, and then it cranks up the resolution right there, while lowering the resolution in the areas you're not focused on. This will typically save a decent amount of processing power, so you should be seeing some better performance and better battery life. So this is the part of the headset that I'm pretty interested in talking about, and that's the controllers. At first glance, they look like pretty much every other VR controller out there. But things lean way more towards feeling like a traditional Xbox or PlayStation controller. They kind of resemble Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons a lot. You've got full face buttons, a D-pad, triggers, bumpers, the whole layout you'd expect from an actual controller. Just split into two with some special VR add-ons. It also has full-size magnetic thumbsticks, which are the same one used on the Steam Deck. Which is great to see, my, my old index controllers have some crazy wobbles in them now. The controllers are powered by one AA battery each, and will give you about 40 hours of use. The final thing I wanted to talk about regarding the headset specs is the connectivity. Now I thought I was just sort of gonna skim over this part, but it ended up being one of the most important parts of the Steam Frame. This whole section basically defines what the headset is trying to be. So here's what Valve is doing. The headset supports Wi-Fi 7, but more importantly, it has dual radios. One radio is dedicated purely to streaming the visuals and audio from your PC. That's your 6 GHz and the other handles your regular Wi-Fi connection, your 5 GHz. This means your VR stream isn't fighting for your home network for bandwidth. On top of that, Valve includes a 6 GHz wireless dongle right in the box, and you know me, man, I love my dongles, I got a lot of them. You plug that right into your PC, and it creates a direct, low-latency link to the headset. So instead of relying on your Wi-Fi for streaming, the headset basically gets its own little private pipeline. You still get Bluetooth 5.3 for accessories, and the controllers have their own 2.4 GHz dedicated link, so they're not dumping more info into your Wi-Fi. That separation is what gives the Steam Frame its identity as a streaming-focused headset. It's not trying to be the ultimate, all-in-one, standalone system like the Quest 3. It's trying to give you the smoothest, most stable wireless PC VR experience possible. And when I figured that out, that piqued my interest tenfold from yeah, it looks pretty cool, too. I just spent $1,000 on a big screen Beyond 2, and now I'm about to spend some more on a Steam Frame. What a time to be alive. Next, I just wanted to bring this up for anyone warning about using the Steam Frame, mainly for VR chat. Let me just say this right now, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice if you're only thinking about using this headset for VR chat, especially if you're using or thinking about getting Vive trackers or Tundra trackers, because again, you're gonna need to buy yourself a headset tracker. IMU-based trackers, however, will work fine, like Slime trackers, Mokopi, or even newer trackers like Fluxpose. That one I don't know a lot about, maybe I'll test it in the future. If you're already using a Quest 3 just for VR chat, there really isn't much of a reason to switch. The Steam Frame is looking to be a great headset for PC VR gaming, but for VR chat only players, the Quest 3 still stands as a reasonable option. However, what you will get with the Steam Frame pertaining to VR chat is eye tracking and potentially face tracking, because the Steam Frame has an expansion port right at the bottom, making room for additional accessories. Whether the Steam Frame is worth it totally depends on what you're looking for and what you already have. But a lot of it also comes down to how much this headset is going to be. At the moment, there's no price tag on the Steam Frame, but based on everything I've seen, I would guess that the Steam Frame will launch at maybe 600 to 800 US dollars. Hopefully. I doubt it's over $1,000, but it might be close to that, who knows. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think is a fair price, because depending on that number, this headset can be either a steal or a hard pass. Let me just say that it is refreshing to see Valve releasing hardware again. Their whole philosophy of like, hey, this is this is your device, it's your PC, do whatever you want with it, is such a Giga Chad move. Doing all this research for this video honestly got me way more excited for this headset to drop, because instead of playing your games on your stupid tiny dinky little monitors, with the Steam Frame, you can play your entire library on the big screen. And not, not the big screen beyond, that's different. Anyway guys, that's all for this video. Leave a comment down below telling me what your thoughts are on the Steam Frame and whether or not it's something that you might consider picking up. There are some details that I skimmed over that I will cover once I get my hands on one. Check out my Discord server too if you want to talk about more Steam Frame stuff. Special thanks to my Patreons, your support means a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.